should have brought some beers out. Oh, man, that would have been nice. Oh man, I, I'm I'm already ADHD medicated, man. You oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. How long have you been uh, on the meds? I went to uni, man, uh, like two years ago, and my uni lecturer is like, "Have you ever have you ever been tested for ADHD, Hamish?" And I said, um, "No, why?" And he goes. I can hear your leg tapping throughout the whole thing. Like you're, you're, I, you're, I can hear, and I can hear you tapping on the desk the whole time while I'm supposed to be doing a lecture. Mm-hmm. And he, and he goes, he oh, goes, I'm not being rude by any means, like because I got on quite well with this teacher. And he goes, I think you, I think you've got it. So then I went and saw a psych, and uh, at the end of it, he's, he, he was like, uh, Yeah, kid, you're definitely ADHD. Um, wow. Yeah. And they were like, you, so you fully got checked for it. Like, yeah, like yeah, the proper yeah, process. Yeah, 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 you have to. It wasn't just like, yeah, I think you're one of them. Yeah, <laughs> these kids are bloody noisy nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got ADHD. <laughs> well, I had to get her. Like, I went to my doctor, and he goes, "Yeah, but you you knew that, right?" And I was like, "No, nah, not really," because I was just wild and you crazy. Go around the mic. I was just I was just wild and crazy. I suppose as a kid, and then they put me on it, and I was like, "Oh, you know, <laughs> wow, what's yeah. it like? What's it like?" Uh, What's it like getting on the mess? <laughs> well, I, look, I do you ever drink beer with them? Yeah, yeah no, but, no, no, but like, but do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, all your life you've had one kind of uh, realm, one kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden you're kind of on these pills and you're thinking, man, this is what it's like to, to think clearly? Or yeah, does, it was does like it change? The, yeah, it was like the scene in Limitless when all of a sudden, like, uh, where, where, where my brain was able to, because focus on more than one thing at a time kind of thing and it wasn't like you know what I, what my next idea was going to that was that was how I thought it was just like you know thinking in I suppose like you know half an hour intervals which now all of a sudden I was like wait what Wow. And all of a sudden you're like, like limitless, limitless, you're running like the stock market and all that sort of oh, stuff. Oh, li- literally. I, I started buying stocks over, <laughs> over lockdown, Bull. got into the stock market for the first time in my Bull. life. Is driving is not limitless. What's wrong with the driving? No, let me tell you a little tale, Gordon, on the way over here today. We were driving and uh, I'm not calling him a granny, but he's a little bit of a granny. Well, that's Speed limit right. 70, he's doing 40. Look, cruising, cruising. This is how one of the reasons I I, I thought I knew I had ADHD is because I'm 22 and this is my third car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, really. Yeah. So, um, like, and I since since being on the meds as well, it makes me drive super safe. And the only thing is, like, it's hard to get drunk now. Is is I suppose that's where it feels like I, I don't get any real speedy side effects. Like I still feel tired. Like and I'm taking speed in the morning. I suppose so. That's 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 weird. But wow. So if you go off them, do you get all fidgety? Uh, not 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 really, man. Because I feel like now that I've been on them for like a year or so. Like when I when I did tr- say to you know, I just felt I just felt a bit awful to be honest just felt a bit low when i when i did stop him for a while, like a couple of days over lockdown i was just like i wonder what see what happened and it wasn't like i think it, it takes a while for your brain to wean off them and then kind of start to go okay we're going back to this 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 side yeah so your folks just rode you off as a bit of a wild child yeah well he, uh jack was telling me a little bit about your backstory and stuff and I, d- I didn't want to do too much homework, just so I didn't come in here and feel like I was fact checking. But um, he told me you moved up from, you know, Victoria. Yeah, and uh, you're a bit of a country boy as well. I've, well. I've worked in a lot of country markets. Yeah. So yeah, from Melbourne originally, and then, oh man, first radio gig at 21. Uh, that was up in Darwin, and that's when the country radio kind of. So there was a good. I'm going to say. I'm going to say 11 years pretty much spent mostly in regional markets. Do you think your style has changed a lot with that? Like your presentation of I'm Gordy, I'm on the radio. Uh, Because you know the market is different. A little bit. A little bit. Definitely in Sydney. Mm. It's more like showbiz entertainment (laughs) in your face, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. (laughs) <laughs> That's how I talk with jazz hands. Um, it's very – Sydney's like they don't have time for a lot of – like they don't have time. They need shit now. They want yeah. it. They want it. You know what I mean? Melbourne's 
different. Melbourne's kind of like, let's talk about our problems, whereas Melbourne's like, let's sort out our problems yesterday. <laughs> um, we don't have time for this shit. The traffic's busy. So, uh, yeah, and they, Sydney's a lot more in your face. If I could tell the difference, if I could sort of explain the difference between Melbourne and Sydney, Sydney's kind of like this sexy 21-year-old with fake boobs and the fake lips and taking selfies and Melbourne's kind of like that cousin that you've got who doesn't really talk much and sits in the corner at the family parties and wears glasses and probably a skivvy, but you all have a couple of drinks and she's probably the funniest, most interesting person in the room. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you won't get much substance out of Sydney. <laughs> no, that's for sure, man. I, I feel a lot more comfortable in Melbourne than I do than I do up in Sydney. Like, I, I, I went down there maybe when we came out of the... When they let us in there for about two weeks. Mm. <laughs> After the first lockdown, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and I was <laughs> they I was, were doing snap lock opens or unlocks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was weird, and I like I was scared the whole time. I was paranoid in the back of my head. I'm like, I'm not going to be stuck down here for the next year. Are they going to suddenly go? <laughs> but um, now while I was down there, I was like, it was you know, you're walking around the city there, and everybody's interested in stuff, and it's like, you know, the, everything that they're doing is <laughs> I actually. I you beg what? your pardon. Yeah, Sorry, excuse Sorry, me. I I made that sound manually, everyone. I literally. <laughs> had my pants around my ankles <laughs> and was just testing the wind chimes. <laughs> no, I actually turned the mic level. Anyway, sorry. Proceed. Oh, look, um, uh, I was just saying I found Melbourne more comfortable because people are like, you know, if, if you had if you had got a show on, it's mm. like a, it's like a big deal to, to the people in their, their inner circles where if it's Sydney, it's like oh, I might try to come next week or the week after. You're doing another one then in a month's time. I might try to go to that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People are caring in Melbourne. Do you yeah. miss Melbourne? Jesus, I just burped on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm People so have done sorry. a lot worse. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do you know what? I do. I, I miss I miss Melbourne ever since I had a kid. Mm. You know, Little Poppy. Jeez. Everyone, everyone. Well, have we poppy started, by the is, way? I don't know yeah. what's going on. Oh, man, we, we just go right in. <laughs> oh, do we just roll in? Yeah. Whenever? Later on, we'll do the... Okay. Everyone, welcome to the... We, oh. we go we go straight. We go all in and straight in. Oh. So, Gordy's got a beautiful little daughter named Poppy. Yeah. And he, what he's telling us is that it's made them homesick somehow, having a baby. Yeah, it's true. Which because I hope the doesn't kid, happen to me. It's weird because the kid loves family, loves like her grandparents and the uncles. And even though she's met them a couple of times, yeah. it's the strangest thing to mm. see because she's only met them a handful of times, mostly on Zoom and stuff. But when she's with them and she's present with them, she gets it. Yeah. She just knows. She It's like she just knows, oh, yeah, that's my family. And she flourishes. She loves it. So, yeah, being – um. I love Sydney and I love – I genuinely love it up here and I love the pace of it and I love – uh, the beaches and I love you know everything about it and and I love the attitude generally it's like a let's just get shit done let's just pick ourselves up and and yeah. do it I love that but uh yeah there's something about something about home which is weird because I haven't really solidly lived there in ten years in over ten years so yeah I do kind of miss it what do you think what do you think it is with with your with your daughter is do you reckon it's like just a like an in like a human nature thing like where we where as it where as a child you just feel comfortable around your family do you yeah i don't know it's weird what it's just weird watching her yeah. um just accept family she just kind of has this intuition and she kind of knows and so you kind of naturally want to be where your kids happy yeah. it's really strange <laughs> <laughs> i never thought i'd want that in my whole life all of a sudden you care for someone else you're like oh what see my parents did the opposite and they just Fucking jumped on a plane to Sydney. Yeah, and then you had to follow and then them I had to come because yeah. I ran out of money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and someone had to do the washing and or feed someone you. always has to do the washing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you have some elaborate outfits. Well, that's true. So that's true. All substance. Yeah. All, all, all style, no stubs. <laughs> <laughs> what that guy said. Does does the missus wash your clothes lovingly? Mm, probably no. Probably no. no. <laughs> so me, me and my, for anyone who doesn't know, my long-term girlfriend, Abigail, <laughs> we've been together for nine years. I know we probably should be married now, but not yeah. yet. You've got to get that going. You've got to get that going. 
yeah. and you got to get married in Can't the best. Get rock. You got to get married. You got to get that uh, wedding in the best rock star way possible. How do you mean? Like I come in on the back of a camel with a kilo of cocaine on the one arm and. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying like, I'm saying like, you could have. Have you seen Pammy and Tommy yet? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You could probably like the celebrant could be Tommy Lee's penis. Okay, you know that scene. I'm sure Abby would love that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. That's an impression of a penis. Is that your penis? That's particularly my, my penis. Will be your celebrant. If Do you think your, your, your <laughs> penis would have, like, a jazz hands approach <laughs> like no, you on the radio? No, it all think Do you think your radio persona is just your penis out of the past? No, very no. much not. My penis would have, like, my penis would, uh, my penis's persona would be, like, a cartoon character from the 60s, like, oh, and... <laughs> Because <laughs> it's a wedding, would you be classy with it and put a little top hat on it? Because I, I, I would. I'd give it a little. A make bu- it, make it feel tie. like a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got my top hat and my bow tie, and I'm ready for the wedding. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen South Park? There's an episode where uh, Oprah's vagina comes to life, and it's uh, it's called Minji. I can't hold on, Minji. <laughs> and, no. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Minji, Minji's very evil and goes against uh, Oprah's like whole ideology, and then ends up ends up you know killing Oprah. She was killed by by her, her Minji, yeah, her vagina, yeah. And the ass was Gary. The, yeah. the power, <laughs> the power of the pussy, yeah, yeah. And wow. her, and her asshole comes to life, and you, uh, it's called Gary. You've got me <laughs> thinking about what my knob won't sound like. Yeah, what would your knob sound like? Be, and this is on, this is it? in no way like I'm saying it's small because it's you know huge. <laughs> to some people, you know, I'm to, sure, I'm to sure it will be. To some but you know, like you know, when there's like a little guy in a fight, and someone's got the hands on the head, and he's going, "Let me at him, let me at him." Oh, yeah. I think that's 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 that's, that's my. Oh, oh yeah, so your penis wouldn't have an English accent. No, no, no. no, no, no. He's, he's well travelled. <laughs> yeah, he'd have, he'd have that. I'm gonna should... break out of here, Ma. Uh, I'm surely, gonna show you all. Surely it should be an Australian because it's a down under, isn't it? Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, it'd have to be. Oh, Get right, yeah, the I, I come here. Bring those sexy little lips out. Yeah. <laughs> Bring those bloody hairy clam lips over here. Come here, darling. <laughs> and you're going, oh, oh, what a beautiful little entrance. <laughs> Do I have to take my top part off inside of here? <laughs> you gave my, my penis a British accent. Yeah, you yeah. made my penis sound like Oliver Twist, which is, <laughs> can I have some more? <laughs> Very similar. It's yeah. almost the same. <laughs> Very much almost so. Almost the same. Holds his little hands out asking for gruel. <laughs> so, Gordy, to get away from the cock chat, mm. um, how did you end up in radio? Where did this all come from? Uh, well, Did you used to do like school yeah, announcements? Yeah, no, I, it's kind of weird because I always wanted to do it when I was a kid. And funny enough, I can actually remember the exact moment was uh, I was studying away and I'm like, God, this, you know, school sucks and, and stuff like that. And I'm listening to a show at the time called The Hot 30 Countdown, uh, and which was on a, a different station to, to which one I work at. But anyway, I was listening to this iconic show called The Hot 30 Countdown at night, biggest 30 songs. And the guy who was hosting was Carl Sanderlands. Oh, really? And Jackie O, yeah. And um, I remember they were doing, I remember Kyle was doing a prank call. Have you heard of Omo Cleaning Powder? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, You've yeah, heard yeah, of Omo yeah. Cleaning Powder? You o- probably o- haven't because o- you don't do your, your own washing, but your o- mum. Other brands, <laughs> other brands are available. <laughs> yeah. But you've heard of Omo Cleaning yeah, Powder, yeah. right? So they came out with this commercial called the. O- I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. This is so dumb. But they came out with this commercial called the Omo Care Line, right? Yeah. So it's like, have you got a stain that you can't? And you'd, call, you'd literally call this number. <laughs> the 90s were, the early 2000s were wild. But. Uh, he called them <laughs> and put on this like gay voice and was like, Hold on. "Yes, is that the homo care line?" <laughs> like, literally, that was the premise of this joke, right? He rings up thinking it's the homo care line. Some old <laughs> woman answered, and he's like, "Yes, I'm having problems with my my boyfriend." And she's like, uh, "What's that got to do with with stains, dear? You know all this." And it was hilarious. And um, 
and that, and that, was, that was the moment. That was, <laughs> that was the moment I thought, that's what I want to do with oh, my really? life. I, no, no joke. But have I, you told Kyle that? Have you, uh, have you told those? Yeah, I think I, I think I might have, yeah. I've, I've met his family and I've told his family <laughs> that. But, um, yeah, uh, that was legit the, the craziest thing ever. That's the sort of moment I wanted to be in radio. And my school didn't, like, and what school does offer that as a some sort of a curriculum. Mm. Um, and then I went and did, <laughs> I didn't know how to get in, so I went and did an arts degree and tried to major in media. And, uh, yeah, from there I did like a post-grad in commercial radio at another uni. I shouldn't have had bloody Diet Coke. That was a bad idea. You bourbon. <laughs> Always mm. bourbon. Jesus. Oh, and it smells. I, ne- I never drink it, but there you go. Um, radio station, you know, got to get on the coke, son. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was the that was the exact moment. And then from there, I did uh, Swinburne, which was like a yeah a post grad commercial radio course. And then generally, you've got kind of once you do that, you've kind of got two ways to get into radio. You can either try and knock on the big stations like mm. Melbourne, Sydney, R- Brisbane, all that, or you can try and. Uh, Generally, what it, in my day, you'd go to the country radio stations and you'd sort of get in there and you'd sort of work for a little bit and you'd try and work your way yeah. up, right? So, and that's kind of what I did, but that took a long time, like a long time. So, I started in Darwin, and that was my first job up there at a station called Hot 100. And uh, yeah, first time out of first time out of home and living in a place like Darwin was just man. Wild country. Different. <laughs> Do, have you ever been? Ah, uh, no, no, not been to Darwin. No, yeah. Oh man, it's a wild place. It's so cool. It's. Do you know when I was there? It was because you're working for the radio station. You get like a lot, and a very much a backpacker uh, place too. So mm. you get these. Uh, you get these. <laughs> you get these bars and these backpackers that are like, hey, so we're um we're hosting a bikini contest at the pub or at the backpackers tonight. Um, we need a host. We can't pay you, but we'll give you free alcohol. And you're like, ah, yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're uh, going to pay you, you in had, exposure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had me in bikini. Count me in. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, you kind of get involved in that. And, man, I was in Darwin for 12 months and legit I left because it was just, it was a party scene. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was, it was... Drinking every night, solidly. What time were you doing? What, what what show were you doing? Oh, like I was at that place. I was doing like a mixture of, you kind of, in the country scene, you kind of do everything. So you're mm. writing ads, you're writing bits and pieces for the radio, you're on this shift and then the next day you're on that shift and you're filling in. And so it was just always wild. So I was there like, I was there for 12 months and from there, where did I go from Darwin? I went from Darwin to a quaint little country town called Tari. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. you know Tari? Yeah, yeah, Tari. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can yeah. I ask a question before we go to Tari? Yeah. I just want to say, like, is Darwin the Wild West? Because in my eyes and looking at it, it just seems like the Wild, the wild West. Uh, yeah, it's weird what – it's weird. I learn a lot of amazing life lessons in Darwin. And I learn a lot about just, just – I don't know, just um, – I don't know. I learned a lot about Indigenous Australia in Darwin. Mm. Um, and, you know, before I went, everyone was like, now, giving me, like, the talk. Yeah. Like, um, and it was it's really sad now that I look back on it because it was almost like the talk of how to approach, the like, the Aboriginal population. And oh, um, So everyone was just bagging it before you even got there, like not, telling you horror stories? Not so much bagging it, maybe like the, the horror stories here and there, but it was more like they're trying to give advice. Mm. And, yeah, it was so so weird. <laughs> it was like pe- like people who have been up there, now listen, there's a, there's a you know, uh, there's an Aboriginal population up there. Like it was, and I look back on yeah. that and I go, Jesus Christ, like... What is that? And then, um, but having said that, it is a, it was a massive eye opener. It was, it was a huge eye opener. I was living with a guy who was a lawyer primarily for the indigenous community up there. And I'll never forget, he gave me some amazing perspective where I said, so how do we, um, how do we fix like the issue up here with, with everything? Like, cause I mean, it was, 
I remember driving from the airport, getting driven, picked up at Darwin Airport, just touched down, never lived out of home. And um, there was, you know, uh, Aboriginal people sleeping on the side of the road or Indigenous, I don't know, Indigenous Australians yeah, yeah, yeah. sleeping on the side of the road. Real true blue Aussies, the real Aussies. <laughs> yeah, and I just sort of, um, I just sort of thought, Oh, it was, it was kind of a shock. Like it was, yeah. it was like they were sort of face down. And I was like, "What's what's going on?" It was a real shock, and um, and then yeah, I remember asking him, you know, just naively, "What's uh, what's the deal with this?" Or you know, "How can we fix this?" And he sort of said, "It's not really uh, one thing to fix." He said, "It's kind of a whole bunch of." Uh, smaller things kind of snowballed and they call it a, a one thing They where they shouldn't. People refer to it as, you know, a problem where it's not a problem. Mm. And, um, y- you know, he said, like, this, there's so much, so much at it from, um, and this is going back, yeah, 10, 15, this is going back 15 years ago, you know, uh, everything to people who were controlling the money, like white accountants, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up becoming friends with a lot of Indigenous elders up there. And the the best advice, I think, I remember one of, the, one of the most amazing things I heard was from one woman. She just said, we just want to be listened to. At the end of the day, we it, it, like we just want to be listened so, to and acknowledged. So real, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. Not even, not even. Oh, we want equal opportunities, or we want the same money pumped into us, or anything like that. That's yeah. We that's just, what she we said. Just yeah. to. We just want to be listened to, and um, yeah, it's an interesting one because a lot of a lot of people a lot of people make a quick assumption. I think. Uh, for instance, up there when they see like the so-called homeless mm. um, up in Darwin and they're on the streets of Darwin, in my experience, for a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, uh, they they might be from like full on desert land, yeah. like yeah. real way out there. And if you and, and it, during the wet season, it doesn't really rain deep in sort of the outback much, but it, it will. And when it does, it's it's the pits. Like, it's proper it's proper muddy. So, like, a lot of the time it's like, well, where we live kind of out there, it's just a muddy mess. We'll just kind of live where it's dry for, for a little bit. Um, or it could be I think there was people that might be kicked out of their mob or their tribe or something like that and uh, for doing the wrong thing, and that's bad. Like, once you're kind of... Shunned. Yeah, from yeah. what I've from what I've been told, like once you're sort of kicked out uh, and you've done something wrong, it's 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 not it's not good. Um, and a lot of the time as well, it's not really just as simple as um, hey, you should go get a job because I mean, yeah, it's weird. It's like, well, hang on, their dad never had a job, and their dad's dad never had a job, and their dad's dad. Never had a job, even if he wanted a job. Mm, or, yeah. um, but a lot of you the, know. if you think about it, like so, not so much in the sense of like our views on what work is and mm. what a job is, and mm. you you go and you do your hours and you get your paycheck at the end of it. Yeah, you know, a job is working on the land. You know, making yeah. sure there's crops. You know, making sure the kids are fed is a job yeah, for well, a lot it's, of people. It's, yeah, it's different there too. And, and, and I suppose, sorry to interrupt you, man. I suppose if you're if you're shunned and you're outcasted from your community like that, and then you're trying to go into like our like Western society, if you like the way we live, mm. and then you're already behind the curve anyway. Oh, exactly. And they, God, they don't make it easy. To get jobs in, mm. in Western society, it's um, yeah, it's. I I I did quite well getting on this uh, podcast. To be honest, you I did. was a guest, and then they they just couldn't get rid of me. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna do the same. I love how they just. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, yeah, it was just look. It's it's um, it, it's just a real different place. Hey, it's just a different different vibe up there. I loved it, and I learn a lot up there. And um, I think it's important as well to get out of where you live and go and experience somewhere else. And exactly. Yeah. And get your own perspective yeah. too. Yeah. Because Jesus, imagine like if I listened to all those people who don't really 
who's never lived up in yeah. Darwin and we're just like Man, when when I moved to Australia, right? So we in in England, especially in Liverpool, we don't have islanders, right, as they're called over here, right? Mm-hmm. And when when I moved to Sydney, everyone was saying, "Oh, you got to be careful of the uh, the Islander boys. Oh, the old dog mm-hmm. punch, yeah, the old... <laughs> But then I realised after working with a few boys who were Islanders and like drinking, being out Islanders, fucking the best people. Oh yeah, the best people. And I was kind of in the thought of I would rather be with them than with you. <laughs> yeah. You know the one saying it. One hundred percent. I think when people give you like. Or an already tainted opinion on something, and it's it's like having a mother that worries too much about things, you know. Mm. Oh, you don't want to go there. Oh, this could happen. Yeah. And then you're going into it without open eyes. You know, you're going in with the blinders on because you're you're expecting the worst all the time. So as you said, to go to go like to go and just experience it and see it, and then come up with your own assumptions. Yeah, is so fucking important. Yeah, it's it's travel. Travel is really, really important, man. Exactly. And how many times have you travelled and just sort of come back feeling completely different, or mm. had a different perspective, mm. or uh, even just feel felt relaxed? You know what I mean? It's, so, <laughs> it's such an obvious thing, but when you're breaking away from uh, the shoebox that you kind of live in, and I don't mean like that as sort of a a unit or whatever. It could be like the the community that you live in. And you kind of get a different perspective on life. It just, I don't know, it just breaks away from everything. It's its the best. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, sorry, what were we talking about? Well, well you, anything. Anything. You've got, everything. You know, you're just talking about perspective on life here. Now, mm. I just wanted to ask you personally, like, you're, you're aware you're working for, for the biggest radio station, arguably, in the country. Number one. Number you one. Know, it yeah. is, I think you it know. is number one. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> you know, like what's that? What's the change of perspective? I suppose f- from you mentally, from going from being a radio host in Darwin yeah. to now being, you know, the here. I suppose. Uh, yeah, I think the weirdest thing is th- the reason why I wanted to get into radio. Listening to that, those two on the air. And now I literally work. You follow in the, in them. The same. You follow them. I'm like they, 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 they in, open for you. Yeah, they, you're, you're the true. headliner. They're my support act, yeah. which is nice. Nice of um, them. No, but now, now that another weird thing is they literally sit in that next studio mm. and uh and do their show and and um yeah we're all sort of yeah it's crazy it's crazy in that respect but I think the the thing. Uh, I don't really sort of, it's at the end of the day, it's still a gig and it's a gig that can go at any time. Like everything you just said about the number one station and all that sort of stuff. It's that's pressure. Well, yeah, absolutely. But like, I'm well aware that I've got this, I've got a short lifespan. I've got a really short lifespan. I, I've got, I'm easily replaceable at any moment. I don't yeah. think. Oh, no, 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 no. Make no mistake. Goldie, re- let me, let me introduce you to compliments corner. <laughs> right? I, you know, because I, I work with so many blokes and they're like, oh, just, and I'm like, what are you listening to? Listening to Kiss. Yeah, right. Listening to Goldie. Yeah, you know, right. in any any workshop I've ever been in on site, if there's a radio on site, it's Kiss and Goldie's on. Is that right? So that that can't be replaceable. Oh no, yeah, they, yeah. they they can they can get uh, they can get a talking penis in here. Well, <laughs> well, you could moonlight for that oh. job as well, couldn't you? And coming up next, <laughs> just me, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, it's. I think because I've sort of worked on from the smaller sort of stations and kind of built up, uh, y- you are you legitimately know that y- you've got everyone, everyone chasing this gig. Everyone like it's it's a gig that I feel like uh, in terms of the the kind of music jock shift a lot. It's it's people tend to want it mm. one because they're following from from the icons that are Kyle and Jackie O um so yeah and so I'm well aware that like at any any day and some and look at one of these days they will realize that uh I'm a bit of a fake and a phony and probably don't belong here but um you know you're kind of well aware that 
it's a sh- like enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, and but that, I'm, I'm that sure, sort of took I'm me sure a while. they probably thought that, and they've been on the. Air. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for no. seven yeah, years yeah. here now, yeah. seven years, wow. which is weird because I sort of gave myself two years. I thought, man, if I can get two years out, out of that station. Does it scare you if, if you had to go, if you had to if go? If I had to go back? Yeah. Would, back would to Darwin? No, I, uh, it doesn't scare me. Uh, I, I guess it makes me nervous in a way because I've got, I've got the kid now mm. and you want to provide and they don't pay nearly enough of what they should be paying mm. in country radio, man. I was on 32K a year for so long, so wow. so many years, so many years. And then uh, and then even, man, even before this job, I wasn't on great money at all. And then this, even even, even now, I barely scrape by. Um, no, look, even even now, I just kind of go, like, it's, it's, it's interesting because... You kind of don't want to go back there, but um, I, I don't know. It's it's you get you get a bit. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You get a bit controlling over your own backyard. You're like, mm. oh, Jesus, I've worked bloody hard to stay here and to yeah. get this job and just <laughs> and to try and stay here. Um, you get really uh, insecure in in a lot of ways, but um, you know, I, it's kind of like a. Uh, Oh, I can't believe I'm making this comparison. It's like a, an AFL game in a way. Like it's one thing to get to the big, to the big time to get yeah, to the yeah. big leagues, but um, also you want to try and stay in the game for as long as you can. You know, kick as many goals and uh, try and get as many games as you can. For me, anyway. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of at that age where I'm like, oh Jesus, when the, any moment they're gonna be like. They're going to realise and then I'll be out. So I can't wait till you're 75. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> any, day any day now. now. Any day any now. Any day now. They'll <laughs> come knocking on me door. You anyway. are, you're, you're, you're the Billy Connolly of radio. Let me have a note. Don't stop I, me. I, I used to sound like an Australian, you but know. I've been on the air for so many years now. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like Billy Connolly now. You know, um... It's funny, it's, uh, before I play some Justin Bieber, let me tell you, the bush. I used to work out in the bush. <laughs> radio. This is, this is audio, but Paul is, live, Paul is on the live. floor. Paul is on the floor. I'm, I'm sitting live with a big fan. I'm glad. Goldie, so obviously I, I know, I, I know Golden very well. And uh, Golden was very smart not to tell me his profession when we met for a while and to see if I would actually be his friend <laughs> before he'd be like oh, I'm on the radio and I'd be like play my music play my music that's right yeah there and was you a didn't, bit of that you, you didn't for like I'd say three months and I'd always be like what do you do and you'd be like oh marketing and you'd be like oh I had a tough day today I was on air and I'd be like what and you're like uh, yeah, in marketing I was doing it in marketing, <laughs> in marketing. I forgot how we avoid we did avoid yeah, we, it for a while didn't we and then and then, and then <laughs> I don't. I don't even know how it happened. It's like Mandela effect. It was just like it. It was always there. I think you were just too concerned about yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Goldie, what do you do? And now I'm going to talk. (laughs) Because did I tell you I'm a musician? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Whoopsie, it's about me again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, did, well, you don't did you don't listen to Kiss then? You didn't put the two and two together. Yeah, exactly. You they, couldn't they, tell. Well, no, no, because <laughs> everyone the sounds room. the same to me. Is that racist? Well, by golly, it should be. I never know. I never know. Gordon. Well, oh, you know the way you're like you're. You sound like my doctor all of a sudden, Go- Gordon. Mr. Waters, have you had, Mr. Um, Waters, can you please sit any, down? Have you had any unprotected it. sex lately, Gordon? <laughs> your penis familiar. seems to have a hat on <laughs> and a cute little voice. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look into its eye again. <laughs> the old scene. I don't guy. know what you're looking at. <laughs> hey, Mister, I sure like your white coat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. Uh, Okay, I'm back on that train of thought. We, we got back there. <laughs> Next stop, serious question. Do you? So you, you know the way, like you're, you're, you, like you're performing, right? So we, we were talking about this, like when, whenever we do a podcast, and obviously you're now in the podcast world, yeah. Um, which we'll get to. We will get there. Yeah. But do, do you? 
Did you ever think about like? Because I know you're a very, very, very funny human being. I'm really growing up watching a Billy Connolly. Hey, <laughs> loving Billy Connolly. Did loving you, it. Did you ever think about stand-up comedy? Uh, I, I think... or being a magician? Yeah, no. Or something else? Uh... I can't walk. <laughs> Or no, I've got nothing else. Because <laughs> uh, you, you, you're performing, you know. Yeah, it's Can funny. You sing, Gordon. Oh f- no, no. And Can I've seen. Do you know what Jack? Jack rolled up to our pub when there was some sort of cover band there. Don't, don't right? Don't rolled you dare, up. Gordon. Was it was it karaoke or something? There was a band there. Anyway, it was very much <laughs> after ten drinks. Excuse me, guys. Take a seat. I got this, and I think they were very much like. What the fuck is this guy doing? Okay, man, no worries. I don't want to start a fight with the drunken guy with the funny voice. <laughs> and all of a sudden it was just like magic. It was just like this whole thing. Just everyone just like looked over in the corner of the room. Who's I have this, my penis who's out. This man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and why is the penis? Let, pe- me, let me at him. Let me at him. <laughs> and the penis was doing backing vocals, which was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh yeah it was cool anyway uh yeah so no didn't I I thought do you know what I did try and I did I did try and do stand up comedy once oh okay and uh that was actually up in Darwin do you remember the bit you it, tried that no I can't no I can't I can't remember it didn't go as shit as I thought <laughs> uh, as it didn't go as shit as I it could have gone but why didn't you go back. Oh, God. I did that. <laughs> Do you know what? I did that on my last night in Darwin. So I was flying out that night. Yeah. So I was flying like the one thing about Darwin is they do uh, like late night flights. And, uh, yeah, I remember just thinking if this is going to be shit, then I'd just like, see you later. <laughs> see you later, fuckers. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, it didn't go as bad terrible as I thought it did. The best part was I think my strength was dealing with a heckler, funny mm. enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyhow, I'll never do it again. Do you think radio's like, uh, you know, do it, like it's like performing but with a blindfold on because I suppose you can't see the audience in some sense? Uh, it's Kind of like how Stevie Wonder does it. Yeah. It's true. Uh, true. It is a little bit. It's a bit like karaoke because... Uh, in some ways, you're using uh, parts of songs so uh, to kind of you're moving in and out of songs and stuff to kind of. I can't remember the question. I've gone on my own tangent. Yeah, the stand-up comedy thing. I thought I'd do it, but I will say, yeah, there is a there is an element of performing on radio in a way like you're using uh, dips of songs especially like the tail and mm. the intro of songs because the whole point of it is to kind of keep the music going. It's supposed to be like this wall of sound. So, yeah, you kind of have to mix callers and mix bits and pieces of this and that and you kind of are weaving in and out of it. So, yeah, I guess there is an element of performance to it. Yeah, I did. A, I had a little stunt in radio. I'd like, you know, I feel embarrassed bringing it up because we're because we're here at the moment. But I did a little. I did a little bit in uh, in Bankstown. Hey. And shout out Bankstown. Shout out Banksy. What's the What's the radio station in Bankstown? Uh, Goldie's called, after a new job. It's called yeah. uh, Two B A C R. Two B A C R. It's It's a hundred point nine FM. Hey. Yeah. Is it like a community station? Yeah, two P A C R. And uh, shout but, out. But I, I found that I found the experience of radio like a, a slightly uncomfortable for for me anyway because I just I just felt like I I became very like like almost scripted in a sense and I and, I, and it was like hard to break out of it and when you pulled people on it's like oh okay you, I like I like doing this because it's like you can kind of dive deep and go for a fifteen minute tangent and, yeah. and there's no songs in between and yeah. it's great in that sense. You can sort of do that with radio, though. I think, and I think that's probably the best way to do radio would be kind of to just go loose at it. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't, I, I don't think you know, being, you know, being wild at the radio station was a was a good idea. It just made a lot of enemies very fast, and I was like, okay, guys, I could, I get the hints. Wow, really? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why did you, Why did you cause enemies at the radio station? Well, I think in I was, Bankstown. What happened? Well, because I they I kind of got in the door off the tail end of doing doing a podcast, and then I kind of went in thinking that it was about the same, and then I then I I'd, I'd loved uh, 
uh, Good Morning Vietnam as a kid, yeah. and I just wanted to come in. Like, oh, I just yeah. wanted to come Good in as a Good Morning Gangster. And I think I think at the time I was also obsessed with with Howard Stern, and I just oh, wanted yes. to come in, come in, just come in. You know, everything just, Howard just, Stern just, says just, is really low. Just yeah. you know, what just, do you think about that? Just a bit wild, and I feel like the 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 board of the you know the, the station you know. Um, God you, bless him, but they're just older, you know, from an older generation and, and kind of wanted me to come in and put my posh voice on and be uh, like, welcome to the radio. And today we have none other than and, and be like that. And it's just we want a straight like, <laughs> that really yesteryear voice. If you wouldn't mind, please. Welcome to Australia, the <laughs> land of opportunity. And look. those four boys from Liverpool <laughs> stepped off the plane today in America. And look at the opportunities <laughs> they have. Oh, look, well, there's, there's some there's women. Some. <laughs> I bet they go off like. Like a firecracker in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, anyway, if you, you could sound are you, are like that on Bank Sound Radio. Are you doing Hamish's penis voice now? <laughs> <laughs> God, that'd be good. Imagine if your your penis's voice was... Narrated. Like, yeah, like yesteryear, 1950s yeah. Australian documentary yeah. voiceover. <laughs> that'd be <laughs> that'd amazing. That'd be all right. Be, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say no to that. I kind of like that idea. We can, we can like make a, it happen. Look at those people off the ship They're hustling and bustling at a brand new... Land. Yes, now let me take you on a journey. To ten pound pot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Wonderful people, but very smelly getting off. Let's put Good in luck. some casual racism. <laughs> <laughs> but Jack, your Australian accent, every time you try to do an impression of me, it's always like an angry... It's like, el- it's yeah. el- Do you understand that I listen to a lot of angry people all the time? Because <laughs> I infuriate but, but, them. But it's not like angry young Australia. It's like angry old yeah, Australia. I worked with a guy. I'm going to... I'm going to just say his name. His name is uh, <laughs> Rick. His name was Rick. And he didn't like me. I was a bit too camp. I was a bit too city boy for him. Yeah, and he used to say, young fella, come here. Suck me dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, daddy. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think I sound too aggressive when I do it. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, mate. You're all like this here. Yeah. But uh, which is that? That's how. You, that's. But I was like, when you did that to me, other, that's how you all sound. Because I, I was listening. I was listening to Jack's voice the other day, and he came over, and we're listening to the Beatles, and we're going, you know. And then I'm listening to his voice, and uh, I was like, you know what? It you, you. We could almost put like fast swinged in the background of anything you say because your voice is like dependent on a bit of rhythm here. Mm. Like when I was listening to it, and then by the end of the a couple of hours, Jack's like looked at me and he goes, "Did you just?" That's my accent, man. <laughs> and I was like, so because I was just getting my my ear Shit, accustomed racist, to it. Man, I'm sick of this. Yeah, I'm sick of this. We needed to start you a hashtag. When, when, when we invited him into the podcast, he's like, and, and here comes the British invasion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over. Taking over, mm, baby. Taking over. <laughs> He'll be saying all, all kinds of things soon. There is like, when you think about music from, from the UK, there's been some amazing waves that the UK have started. Mm. Um, the... the obviously the 50s, 60s and stuff like that. But I reckon one of the most underrated ones is that kind of 90s dance culture mm. that, that sort of that just the sort of poppers, grew. The yeah, that sort of... Uh, the shift shapers. The, the, yeah, the milky bars are on me. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's really cool. Those like those really classic UK movies like Train Spotting. What's that mm. other one I'm thinking of? What's the milky bars are on me one? You know. Oh, I can I can see it, see it in my head. I, it's by the same guy that uh, directed the Matthew McConaughey one, like the Guy Ritchie. Oh no, Guy not Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. No, no, no. All that's left now is pub drama parties. The monkey bars are all me. What's that one? What's that movie I'm thinking of? Traffic, Human Traffic. <gasps> have you seen that? I can't say I have. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boom. Haven't you seen no, that? No. Human Traffic is one of the greatest movies ever, especially it, to come out of the UK. Oh, What's fuck. that supposed to mean? Well, <laughs> you make some pretty shit films, see? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> no, Human Traffic's a brilliant movie. You should see that. Who's Are you guys like uh, movie buffs? Do you like movies? Yeah, yeah but, a, a little bit. No, I, I haven't seen this movie anymore. either. Yeah, wow. I, 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 <laughs> oh, man, I, I could play a bit for your podcast. I could. Can I do that? Am I allowed? I think you're allowed. I don't know. Does Spotify seconds. let us? <laughs> I think yeah. you're allowed 12 seconds. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, well, here we go. Uh uh, have you seen it, Jordan? You're uh, you're a movie buff. Train spotting, oh, I've seen yeah. yeah. Choose life. Choose life. Choose love. Choose cocaine. The second one was a bit of a letdown. Yeah. You. 
I don't think they can sue us if I talk over it. Yeah, you. Oh. Yes. You. Me? <laughs> Fucking away. Aren't you? Fucking away. Like you're late for evolution or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's right. I know. Uh, let's get Everybody. to the good bit. Hang on. Each other for the rest of our lives. We're both as fucked up as... Coop is the best of best mates. He's an absolute craftsman, man. We're going to know each other for the rest of our lives. We're both as fucked up as each other. Now, I love his sincerity. He's the coolest person I know. Oh, this is a proper intro. Now, Nina is Coop's girlfriend. He's ever since. He got moved down here when his dad... I'm having the best time. Yeah, yeah. I think this is it. his tits. I swear on my mother's life. He's, 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 I'm having the best time being off my pickle know, oh, and feeling the music. Danny, you, Danny, Danny Dyer. You know, you know what I mean, yeah? Oh, yeah, there's Danny Dyer. Kush I knew you wouldn't let me down. I knew it. <laughs> Did that say the music was by Pete Tong? You're a banger. We've known each other for years. We became. We can't be enough. Dad got promoted to super into. Being off my pick. I knew you wouldn't. Ah, oh, this is pissing me off. <laughs> Where is it? We got 78 hours of freedom upon us and the monkey bars are on me. Oh fuck, whatever. Maybe one of the listeners can uh can send it in. We can edit that shit out. <laughs> anyway, it's a great movie. Are you human, sure? human traffic. Let's watch it together this weekend. Can we? Yeah. Okay. We can all watch it. Okay. Together. Separately. <laughs> Separately. <laughs> Separately. In separate With rooms. All penises out. <laughs> Se- they, they'll all be doing a bit of talking on it. <laughs> yeah. Separate rooms, but in the same house. Yeah, I'd we'll like just that. Watch it. I'd like that. That would be weird. Anyway, I'd enjoy it. Yeah, I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Where were, I was expecting this to be over by eight o'clock. My wife's like, "What time are you going to be home?" I'm like, eight. I'll be home by eight. Get what the sushi ready. Eight o'clock. Oh, are, are you making o'clock? sushi or are you getting? No, it? she's she's ordered sushi. Oh my god, oh, I'm so excited. Nice. God, I'm so nice. Sushi. What is the time? By eight, the way, it's eight it's o'clock. Eight. eight o'clock on the dot. All right. Well, do you want to start? Do you want to start wrapping it up? Yeah, go on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. All right. I thought you were. I thought you were going to take the lead then oh. for a second, Jay. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. No, that's I, all right. I feel like uh, I, I f- the problem is we'll go two you, questions each. You are, you ask these questions and I go off on this tangent and I never answer them. Yeah, because yeah, I don't know why we ended up on human trafficking. Yeah, I don't either. Look, that's all right. That's been the last couple of episodes since Jack's joined. We haven't answered anything. We just start <laughs> something and it goes to six different like, trains I, of thought. I like it like that. Man, me too. It's kind of fun. Um. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think I, that was my fault because I asked about movie buffs. But um, anyway. so oh, go- look, oh, I, can, oh, I want to go. Can oh, I, can I, can I ask this? You oh, start. Oh, look, Jeff, go on. Oh, I'm going. I'm, I'm taking lead here. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, recently, I think. I think doing doing a bit of podcasting and uh, you know especially especially with Jack he's taking me into places and and all of a sudden I'm yes. bringing remembering places you know going in deep into my own personal life and stuff with on podcasts and I, I've realised recently and I I don't know if it's a realisation or if it's if it's my con- own conspiracy theory here but I I think the reason that uh, you know one of the reasons that contributed to Kyle and Jackie O's success is Kyle is so honest right and honesty is so hard especially when you're putting it out to the world and you know and you're like oh how honest do I really want to be not about a lot of it in certain, the world certain things and 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 I think I, I think that's been a, like a like a like a like a liberating thing, and uh, but also also a tough thing, especially when you like just to to give away you know little bits of yourself that you're like oh I don't know if I should be putting that one out, but oh well it's gone now <laughs> now. Look, I think yeah, I think definitely do it. I, I think the key to it is just not really to give a shit about it yeah. because if you're generally you know if you're a good or shitty person, right? And I think if, as long as you kind of put it out there and you're sort of true to your own thinking, it doesn't really matter at all. Yeah. It doesn't matter because, it, yeah, if you're a decent dude, which you guys are, 
mm, Jack, mm, mm, a bit shady. Uh, a lot but, of people say that. Yeah, <laughs> but I think just generally, like, people now more than ever want authenticity anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I think they're sort of craving it. And I think that's probably why it's so refreshing with Kyle and Jack because the media can generally be so manufactured or... Um, What's the word? Shitty. Yeah, a little bit and a little bit artificial as mm. well. So I think like the authenticity there is just it stands out and it's uh and people can see people can see right through you when you're being fake anyway. So yeah. what what what's your views on cuz we were talking about Howard Stern earlier. Howard Stern basically said any podcasts like oh, he doesn't like them. Mm. He doesn't like the he thinks they're kind of getting in on his thing. What are your views on podcasts now as a as a radio host and a podcaster with the Drive Show? The weird thing is with say Stern, like I'm a massive Stern fan, mm. and he's always had people chasing his back in terms of the authorities have been on him, FCC and and on all that sort of stuff. And he's always been about uh, freedom of uh, speech and um, you know uh, free media, you know. And podcasting is that. Like, yeah. there's some amazing, smart people out there, comedians doing hilariously brilliant, do not give a shit podcast. Tim Dillon is probably yeah. my favorite <laughs> of that. Yeah. Right. He's just making stuff that's just, he, he's kind of like a, a mixture of Stern and Alex, Alex Jones, Jones in a yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. I think it, he's our generation's Alex Jones, I suppose. In, in a way, yeah. But he kind of wraps it up. He's actually genuinely funny, whereas. <laughs> People like Alex Jones, you kind of go, Jesus, man, did you just say Sandy Hook was fake? What? Um, but, look, I, I think I think the, the weird thing about Stern not liking podcasting is kind of he's probably just saying that because, you know, he's got a $500 million deal with uh, Sirius or whatever so, it yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, so he's probably a bit like, stop listening to other people, listen to me. Um I mean, the irony is with Stern is if essentially what he's doing is is a podcast. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, you still have to pay for it. It's free media. It's um, he's kind of the OG of you can't be censored. Yeah, and he does it so well. He's a brilliant. I love the way that Stern kind of did the taboo. You know, people having sex live on air yeah. and doing all this stuff that no one ever did and no one ever talked about and all that. He kind of brought it out there and went, yeah, we're talking about this and we're doing this and it's exciting radio. Like, oh my God. It, yeah, yeah. Wow. What's what's going on next? Do you think he's changed his tune yeah, like, a and, lot? Like, but I was going to say, like, he's really done this cool thing in his later years where he's sort of... Uh, Invented himself as a brilliant interviewer. Like he's a mm. he's a fucking great interviewer. He's had a lot of conversations though, man, hasn't he? You know, yeah. with like some really really insightful people. Yeah, and it's and hard. Some others. Yeah, it, yeah, it's hard to kind of keep on. Like as as you guys know, it's like it's hard to keep focused on on mm. that one thing. And I mean, yeah, Rogan's the same. Everyone shits on Rogan, but um, you don't have to like or. You don't have to agree or dis. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with him. You kind of have to respect respect it in a sense. Like he's at least got an opinion that whether you agree with it or not, he's sort of somehow backing it up. Or if he's chatting to whoever, he can at least hold a conversation for three, four fucking hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's what the important thing is of, of what Rogan does is. It, it, you're sitting across from someone, and I, I'll listen to them, and there'll be something on there I don't agree with. Yeah. But like like Jordan Peterson, for example, right? Yep. That man is very, very intelligent, right? Even if we don't line up on a lot of the same like social views or whatever, I can respect the fact he he is that intelligent. Yeah. He just lands on different islands I, that I would. Yeah, and I think if he's got he's got an opinion, mm. he's at least backing it up with something well thought out and bloody well articulated, mm. you know? And I yeah. think that means a lot. But yeah, it's I think I think that's the. Be- I think that's why I kind of jumped into podcasting. Yeah, as well. I, w- yeah. I wondered about that man. Cause yeah, it, I, like I've 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 li- I listened to the very first one when I was yeah. in hotel quarantine. That was a bit, that was a bit shaky that first oh, night. Oh man, <laughs> a bit shaky. They're all they're Took all shaky. Took me about three episodes. Yeah, they're, they're, all, all, they're all, shaky. all shaky. They're very Parkinson's. Yeah, <laughs> all of them. All of them. All of them. Michael <laughs> Parkinson, of course, was a great TV host. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Gordon is. But how, how do you find the difference from say sitting down and doing doing your podcast to then well, going the, into the studio? on the next day that, well, must, that yeah. must be a weird yeah one I'm talking about cars so it's a bit different 
mm. in that respect. And it's sort of uh, a little passion project. Like it's a little bit something I'm I'm into. Um, also, I'm doing it with a guy who is legit the smartest guy in the room. Yeah, he's very, 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 <laughs> very smart. And I take the pit like. It, it, we've now got this great rhythm where I just I don't know what the fuck he's talking about and I just take the piss out of him the whole time mm. and so um, but as much as I tease him and as much as it sounds like I don't sort of think much of him I genuinely do like he yeah. is the smartest guy in the room he's knows everything about everything mechanically and um, business wise is a brilliant mind so um, yeah so I, I enjoy that because it's just complete. It is, yeah. it is completely different to mm. this. Yeah. Uh, Gordy, are you going to get a Bentley? Am I going to get a Bentley? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. No, I'd probably get a – I'd get a Ferrari. I'd get a Porsche over a Bentley any day. I'd get – I'd get like an old 70s Ferrari. Mm. I remember when you had your Porsche yeah. and you said to me, you know the problem with a Porsche, Jack? You're on the bus and you've got more money than me because I'm the stupid idiot driving a Porsche <laughs> around. <laughs> Still true. It's, uh, man, I remember a door handle fell off that, like just from opening it. Nothing I did stupidly, just I opened it. And you it cost me $800. <laughs> for the handle? <laughs> for them to like, no, the, it sort of didn't break off. Something inside and just kind of snapped. I'm like, what the hell just I'll, happened? I'll be climbing in through the window. Oh, man. That'd be... man. <laughs> you want to come with me? You're getting in through the window. Oh, I had to put brakes on it once. Like, yeah, I had yeah. to get the brakes replaced. And then it cost like $6,000. Like, this is stupid. I can't do this anymore. The car, the podcast. The, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> keep so doing did, it. Was it a 911 or did you? No, you it was actually a Cayman, which is like, like a lot of purists, like a lot of Porsche heads will call the poor man's Porsche, but yeah. it's it's actually probably one of their best. It's probably, the, I in a lot of ways, it stands up it, like so much more than the 911 because it's a balanced engine and it's like everything is just, it might not go as fast, although they now do. They, they now have come out with these GT4s that are, fuck, they, it's basically they put a 911 engine in the middle of a Cayman and it's, oh, it's mind-blowing. But, yeah. They're just so well balanced and they feel the road so much better than any other car I've jumped into. If I had the money, I'd buy another one. Are you missing yeah. it? Yeah, I miss it all the time. But you got a baby now instead. I got a baby. <laughs> what are you driving uh, now? The thing you, <laughs> tough choice. It's good, to, yeah. What are you driving now, Gordon? I'm driving a Kia Stinger. <laughs> Very quick though. Okay. Very quick. It's actually pretty fun. Oh, I've, yeah, seen yeah. I've seen you zipping round. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's it's actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be. V6 twin turbo. Nice. Oh, Jesus. And it's a Kia. So you've got a good old seven year warranty. Seven year warranty, <laughs> mate. Bloody <laughs> five years roadside assistance. Beautiful. So um, Gordy, if 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 I ask this to, to musicians and to comedians. Is this some? Um, am I circumcised? Are, are you? Are to... you circumcised? <laughs> um, well, no, because yours has got a top hat on. It's good. So no, you are. <laughs> it's a top hat made of excess skin. <laughs> oh, <It's> like... <laughs> sleeping back. <laughs> Gordy, Gordy, why the radio? Of anything else you could do in the world, why? Why is this I your just, your just, your I, vocation? Yeah, I don't think I'd be good at anything else apart from sitting down and talking into a stick. I think that's my calling in life. I think that's where I, I'm at. I know a guy. Yeah. I don't, I just, yeah, that's weird. Uh, I, that's a really good question. I don't know how to answer it. I just genuinely always wanted to do it, and I think it was because I was terrible at everything else, and I'm not great at radio. You're Let's be honest. Right? I'm pretty, I'm pretty average. Compliments corner. <laughs> no, 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 you, can I just it. say, how do you get on Kiss if you're pretty average? Like, like you know, you, uh, that's, I think you being here is like, you know, the, you know, a great compliment to yourself, man. Like, yeah, you thanks. know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, um... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something really rude. Casting couch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you there, was a brown, there was you a brown couch that. involved. You and uh, uh, I could put my leg in ways that no one else could. Um, <laughs> I was having a look when we walked in. I was wondering if there was one here. <laughs> yeah, there's several. I'll take you out there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, fuck. I, as I said, I don't know. I think I, I think uh, it's, it's cool that I'm here, uh, but I very much kind of have that imposter vibe about 
uh, working here a lot of the time. Oh, imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. I think so. Because there's, there's honestly, there's times where I've done like my break or whatever on air and I've switched off the mic and I guarantee you now I'd be, I've, I've got a, I can feel it coming and I've like made a conscious effort to switch off the mic because I've just, fuck, what the fuck was that? I've known to break headphones before. <gasps> yeah. Like, uh. Like, oh, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> like these ones. With well, the, these with ones. The sticky I've broken tape on these them. several times. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've busted headphones. I've done all sorts of things. I've pushed Shit. this mic. Um, yeah, I've done all sorts of things. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm here, but I'm here. And it took me a while to kind of realize I'm just going to enjoy it because it's not going to last forever. And uh, I can't get validation from, for instance, numbers on paper, like, Ratings, yeah. for instance, mm. uh, you just have to find validation in other things uh, in the job. Is intern Pete a nice guy? He's a, I've known, oh my God, I can I, tell I, you. Because I've, I've always I'm wanted at, to I'm meet him. I, 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 <laughs> really nice. he, he's an asshole. He's a, re, he's a real sophisticated showbiz prick. No, I've known, <laughs> uh, I've known Pete for like 15 years. When yeah. I was working in um, Geelong at this little radio station called K-Rock in Geelong, he was working in a uh, a tiny town called Horsham in Victoria and we would be, we were very like we're only 40 minutes away from each other and I've still got emails somewhere like on my Facebook of like hey I really like what you do it'd be really good to team up together and do a show blah 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 <laughs> So, yeah, we've known each other for a long time. <laughs> I never responded to him, of course. Back then I was like, who's this dickhead? <laughs> um, you are not on my level, yeah. kid. <laughs> uh, no, but we've been mates for a long time. Pete's, Pete's a genuine. The thing is with Pete is he comes across, and a lot of the time it is true, he's a bit of a bumbling moron, but he's also behind the scenes. What people don't realise is he's one of the greatest radio minds I've ever worked with. Mm. And that's the absolute truth. He's so brilliantly smart with ideas and stuff like that. So there is a bit there. Look, there is a little bit of persona, I reckon, but it's also hard to it's also hard to tell because I'm like sometimes when I'm talking to him, I go, Jesus, like there is actually very little difference between you being a bumbling moron and you being normal you. It's like it's a very actually fuck it. There's no difference. He's a bumbling moron. Yeah, he's very he's a good guy though. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I mean, look, I, I I was just curious. I've I've I think I've watched every video you guys have put out on YouTube with intern Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it, man, it was like a full circle moment today when just walking in here and just yeah, just have seen this whole place on on YouTube and stuff you guys have done over the years. And it was like, is his head you know. exploded? Exploded? Yeah, right. And you're like, yeah. oh, just come to my studio. He was like. <laughs> Well, he's, you know... I mean, we, it's a big... Thank you're, you're, you for hosting us, and you come to us next time. It's not as fancy, <laughs> but there is a neon light. Thanks, thanks for coming to me. I just, I can sit in my same chair, can use my normal mic and my headphones, but come in any time. Come in. Jack does. Yeah. He's bloody... He doesn't even in. ask. <laughs> yeah, he just sends me a text again? message. Play my music! Play my music! <laughs> no, I've never done that. Has he convinced you yet? What's that to play his music? He won't yeah, even yeah. play on Spotify. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. Is that a podcast? I think that's a podcast. Gordon, Thank you very much, man. Thank it's you a very much. Man. You're the best. Thank you for having me. This listen is the longest to, chat to I've ever had. Gordy's podcast, The Drive Show. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, the Drive Show.com.au. Uh, Get on it. That'd be good. Thank you so much. You'll love it. Thank you very much, man.